Can you hear that? That is the sound of a natural gas leak. Those are happening all over Joplin, but that is the least of the Niederhelm's concerns. That's because they're still missing a part of their family, and they are pretty sure he is not coming back. My gut as a mother is that Zachary's gone. At the very least, Tammy Niederhelman knows her 12-year-old son is not here. Yet, here he is. <laughs> yeah, he was a cute little stinker. Yeah. This mother is searching for anything that reminds her of her little boy. I did find yesterday further down the road a quilt that his grandma Kathy had made him. Um, it had Hot Wheels on it. He loved cars. Zachary Williams was in the bathroom. The last time my husband looked in, he was sitting on the toilet right here with uh, his cell phone and a flashlight. Tony Meter Hellman was sucked right out of the house. Yeah, I remember laying up against his, the back of the house, and I remember looking up and watching the roof peel off the house. And then after that, I don't know if I got knocked out or what. And then I woke up, I was sitting in the pickup. Zachary was gone, but Tammy says a neighbor found the body of a young boy. <laughs> Heartbreaking as it was to hear, he told Tammy it was the boy in this picture. Our plea is though, if, if he is gone, please just quit delaying the torture that you're doing to these people. Let us see our family. Let us get the closure. I just want to pick him up and hold him and tell him I love him one last time. I know if he's not here, he's, his body's just there, but his soul's somewhere else. We have to have the closure. Until she She's sees for herself crazy. that the child who loved Legos and his family was excited for high school and would turn 13 next month, did not survive the storm. There is no closure. Instead, there's an inkling of hope. I don't want people to stop looking if he could be out there. This is the Niederhelm's message for you. Again, the boy's name is Zachary Williams. He's 12 years old. He has glasses. His mother is still desperately praying that he's alive tonight. In Joplin, Joanna Small, KSPR News. There is a lot of attention focused tonight on this list. It is a list of 232 people supposedly missing. However, in a lot of cases, it turns out they're not missing at all. I heard this morning that he was on that list. By this afternoon, Tammy Niederhelm and heard her son was dead. So. After days of searching, even though a neighbor was almost certain he'd found 12-year-old Zachary Williams' lifeless body, Tammy got the news from officials. She'll finally see him tomorrow. I am looking forward to touching him and, and um, just kissing him. I've been going outside every morning and talking to him because I know he's up there. The process to confirm Zachary's fate was painful. It took days. Had it been quicker, he never would have needed to be on this list. They shouldn't be unidentified. The list puzzled Sandra Nagler, too. This is the place that the lady down here told us that they found Tripp and Mark. Three men with Down syndrome were killed in this house. One was Sandra's brother, Mark. The other two made the list. One died instantly, but Mark and the other man were still alive, huddled together in this hole where a vent once was. You just know that that, that was a suffering time for them because they were both so afraid and didn't know what happened. So it was, I don't like to see that. Both died in Freeman Hospital. The list is too late, but it wouldn't have mattered anyway. Now Sandra's here remembering. Oh, there's the Easter card that I just sent to him. <laughs> Here's one of his Special Olympics medals. And books, lots of them. He knew all the presidents. He knew their wives. He knew the dates they were born and died. Tammy is remembering too. He loved to tell stories, so we're determined he's up there telling Grandpa Jackson stories. <laughs> we're honored to tell his. Just through a few hours of our own investigating tonight, we can check off Kaylee Hare, Rick Fox, Mark Lindquist, Ray Miller, and finally, with a heavy heart, 12-year-old Zachary Williams. In Joplin, Joanna Small, KSPR News. Four months later, the search is over. I don't want people to stop looking if he could be out there. But Tammy Niederhelman is still looking for something she'll never find, closure. It's a minute by minute thing. So I, we both miss him horribly and would do anything to have him back. From the front porch of her new Joplin home. And I remember looking up and watching the roof peel off the house. Tammy is remembering what happened at her old one. He loved Legos and Hot Wheels. We found a few. Tammy's son, 12-year-old Zachary, was killed in the May 22nd tornado. Tonight, she's examining why. Tammy was working in Freeman Hospital's ICU that night. 
She called Zachary after the first siren sounded. I asked him what was wrong and, and he said that he was just really scared and I had, I had told him, I said, you know, son, they go off all the time, you know, and, and even though we had heard that it was supposed to be a big storm, we just kind of all thought, you know, it's saying that it's supposed to go north of us. It won't be that big of a deal. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration report says Tammy and so many others are desensitized to the sirens. Here's why. 76% of all tornado warnings nationwide are false alarms. That means only 24% indicate an actual tornado. And just over half of all severe weather warnings coincide with an actual severe weather event. Many didn't react until the second siren. Some not even then. Tammy wonders if it even mattered. Where were they to go? You know, I mean, a lot of us, like our instance, where would he have gone? There were no basements in her neighborhood. Now the Jasper County Emergency Manager is requesting 10,000 weather radios and 4,000 shelters. Tammy says they needed both that night. Everybody calls it the Joplin fungus around here. Without either, her husband barely survived the storm that killed Zachary. Now he's scarred for life. So is Tammy. Yeah, he was, uh, he was pretty attached to mom. She forges on. There is no closure only life. A lot of friends that used to be my friends I don't really talk to a lot anymore because they just don't understand. It's like to them I should move on you know and I want to talk about my son. You know he's still very much alive in my heart.